Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it is the end of the month, so we're going to do kind of a, a different kind of a video. Mm -hmm. uh, we're only going to do, I think, the one today. But uh, we're going to talk about cancel culture. We've been talking a lot about the uh, pendulum swinging. Mm -hmm. The cancel culture hasn't been as effective uh, as it was in the past couple of years. But it's interesting, this article popped up on Reason within the last couple days talking about how most cancel culture is younger people. Oh, and shocker. It's shocker <laughs> that they actually support it and fear it. So they're, they're both- So they give it power. They give it power. It's basically people under 30 giving cancel culture power. So you're giving it power over you. Right. And I have to wonder if, if some of these people won't outgrow cancel culture or is it so embedded uh, with their generation, it's, it's totally cool to ostracize people. It's totally cool to take their jobs away. It's totally justified to strip somebody of their personhood, their livelihoods, uh, if they're a wrong thinker. Or wrong according doer. to them. According to them. According to Twitter. Not very one-sided. According to Twitter, according to Tumblr. So we're going to talk about this. Um, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, almost 260,000 subs. Yay! Thank you so much for the support. Uh, we do talk a lot about pop culture. We've been talking a lot about cancel culture because the two are, are intersecting more and more. Mm -hmm. uh, there, for a couple of years, uh, was a, a wave of, of cancellations. Uh, people getting canceled for being wrong thinkers or nebulous accusations. Um, you know, it's funny though because older people just don't care. They mention that in the article. They're just like, "You go ahead and cancel me. Screw you." Yeah, because what's going on is I think Twitter is starting to be like, wait, wait, Gen X boomers are not, they're not listening to us. Why aren't they listening to us? And, you know, for a generation that's so concerned about mental health and mental well-being and talking all the time about, you know, we need to have more, you know, acceptance of mental health issues, which I agree with, actually. Um, they're creating their own mental health issues by ostracizing and scare, they're trying to scare people into going along with what they say. And that's not going to help. I mean, we've seen public, you know, shaming, bullying, all that kind of stuff, actually telling people to kill themselves for not agreeing with them. And we're seeing increases in depression, anxiety, suicide rates, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they're probably connected, especially in younger people. We have 12 year olds killing themselves. Yeah. So, you know, weren't the uh, Salem witch trials, they were started by, is, yes, this is exactly by a bunch of like. teenage girls. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's kind of what's going on here. When we cancel say- Cancel the witch. Cancel the witch. And and people are afraid of, of being canceled themselves. And this is why I think you see um, so many people willing to throw their peers under the, the bus because they're trying to buy themselves more time. Well, the whole mentality too, that it's completely okay to call somebody's work up and try to get them fired because they didn't like a show you liked or because you assume they voted a certain way or, you know, they did vote a certain way is unbelievable to me. Like I can't wrap my head around why you would think it was completely justified to try to get someone fired from their job, even if it has nothing to do with the entertainment industry, simply because they don't agree with you on something. I think they're frustrated because they don't understand that not everybody subscribes to this cancel culture doctrine. You know, they're like, wait a second, the rules are, you know, if you've been targeted, you're supposed to just delete yourself. Right. Well, yeah. Well, it's, it's about the fact that it's, you know, about bullying and controlling people through fear and bullying behavior while going on about how acceptance and, is, is what we're, we're supposed to do and bullying's bad, but it's okay when they do it. You know, just, just saying the pendulum is starting to swing uh, for sure. People are not afraid to go near radioactive personalities mm -hmm. uh, anymore. I think they've, they've realized that, yeah, it is basically just a bunch of dumb kids on Twitter, younger people on Twitter. They're trying to cancel industry veterans. We talked about the John Lasseter situation and the people that complain the most about John Lasseter. Most of them were younger animators, uh, but then we're seeing, you know, veteran Disney creators going to work with, with him now. Right. It's just, I mean, it doesn't mean that they didn't do anything. Like, he didn't do anything wrong. We don't, I mean, he still could have crossed lines. We weren't there, but yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that it's this whole idea that, you know, if you don't, if you make one mistake ever, that you should be canceled and wiped from existence is absolutely ridiculous because a lot of these people themselves have made mistakes. You cannot tell me they haven't said something or done something stupid. I think that's where you get to the self-cancellation. But a lot of people cancel themselves or they, they, they remove themselves from people that are going to be canceled because, um, they're afraid they're going to lose their biscuit. Like we yeah. saw with uh, Patton Oswalt throwing Dave Chappelle under the bus. Yeah. I mean, 
God, seriously, like they were friends for how many years? Oh, he, it was okay to be his friend when Black Lives Mattered. Yeah, oh yeah, right? Mm. Uh, Black Lives Matter, just not that black life because right. you know, he's yeah, not the flavor of the month. Listen anymore. to women, unless it's a woman who you know doesn't agree with you, then you have to unperson them as much as possible. Yeah, and this is about buying yourself time. This is about you know currying favor with, with uh, the outrage mobs on Twitter, which are basically a bunch of pissy-ass teenage girls. We know this for a fact. Some of our stalkers, I found out, are just a bunch of like teenage girls mm -hmm. that are pissed off at us for cartoons or, young adults, or whatever. Yeah. Young adults. It's like, God, seriously. Anyway, this is coming from Reason. Uh, cancel culture. We lack that in the world. <laughs> we do. Uh, young Americans more supportive of cancel culture, also more afraid of it. So they support it, and it's like a religion. They're, it's exactly they're, what it is. It's a know, cult. They love it, but they're also afraid to be ostracized. It's okay, because they're the ones bullying and, and being the toxic people. Yeah. Uh, plurality of young people think their fear of losing job opportunities is a price worth paying to remedy past injustices. Past injustices in what way? If you had nothing to do with the injustices, it isn't your fault. Then why do you have to remedy anything? Young people are much more fearful of cancel culture than older Americans because they're the ones perpetuating it. Mm -hmm. You're doing it to yourselves. You're letting <laughs> fear control you. But they're also more supportive of it, according to a new report by the Manhattan Institute's Eric Kaufman that surveys public attitudes towards various culture war items like critical race theory, free speech in college campuses, and diversity well, Here's training. the problem, too, though. You're talking to a bunch of people that have been indoctrinated in this for years. That's yeah. all they know. It's what's familiar. They've been, they've gone out of their way to make sure. They're probably talking to college kids and stuff like yep, that. Yep, yep. And it's, that's exactly what they've been taught. You know, to be accepting of, and and you have to fight this war. And when you're young, you're look usually you're looking for something to fight for, and this is an easy one. You can sit on your ass and fight for, and not have to actually go out and do anything. So this is kind of crazy. Like I, you know, I, I, it is ending. I think it's older generations. They're like, you know what? This is a bunch of bullshit. Why are we? Why are we letting these kids dictate? You know, the terms of of our uh, you know employment or terms of uh, you know culture. And, um, but these people, they, they take it seriously. Yeah. When, the rates though, 45%, that's not a majority. No, let's, let's look at this. So when analyzing polling data from a variety of surveys, Coffin found that 45% of working people under 30 were afraid of losing their jobs because someone misunderstands something you've said or done, takes it out of context or posts something from your past online. They're familiar with it because they grew up with social media mm -hmm. they know how this shit works. And frankly, it's only been the last eight or 10 years at the most, I think you've had to worry about getting canceled. And that, that comes from Tumblr. That was Tumblr culture. And then it bled over into Twitter. Uh, the kind of social sanction typically described as cancel culture among Americans, 55 and older, just 29% had the same fear. Well, who gives it? Cause they're, they're probably a lot of them aren't, aren't in a position where they could be fired from but their job. But 45% and 29% are not the majority. No. If younger millennials and members of Gen Z have more to fear from cancel culture, they're also much more willing to say that they accept the terms. That's the problem. You don't accept it. You say, fuck this. This is mm -hmm. bullshit. By a 48 to 27 margin, respondents under 30 agree that my fear of losing my job or reputation due to something I said or post online is a justified price to pay to protect historically disadvantaged groups. Now, those over 50, by contrast, disagreed. Younger age brackets are both more fearful of cancel culture and more supportive of it. Right, because older people have been through this shit. We had PC culture back in the 90s and stuff, and they've already seen how the outcome. And the outcome isn't great. Uh, Coffin pushes back against the idea that there's a hypocrisy here. On the contrary, it seems that many young people are taking a self-sacrificial attitude. Okay, self-sacrificial attitude to what? For what? For the cause, basically. What cause? The, the social justice cause. So, so here's the thing. This is why you know, a lot of uh, the cancellations at first, I think, were effective. Because I remember when a lot of this stuff started, especially with you know comic book people and all of that, you were supposed to... If you were accused of something, you were supposed to basically delete yourself from the scene and go away. And because people push back and they're like, wait, wait a hot damn second. Why do I have to delete myself, delete my career? Why do I have to step down from this position? Why do I have to whatever? Because you said I did something wrong yeah, when you I don't even You don't even know. There's a half time. There's not even evidence. Just so-and-so said. Like we You're did, a witch. Uh, we saw this a lot with us on Twitter. Like, well, I heard from so-and-so. The other day, they were like, well, they said this about... I'm like, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. We, and then people were like, where did they say that? Because they never said that. And it's like, they... Oh, my friend of a friend told me. But I like this comment. 
This is a load of shit right here. Rather than viewing such individuals as thin-skinned or inconsistent, we They're should- They're pussies. Yeah. They are pussies. We should consider them to be <laughs> adhering to a consistent set of ideas that places the emotional safety and advancement of minority groups above, the, above, above their personal freedom of expression. Yes, that would be true, except we have seen countless times that if it was truly about those minority groups- then you would wouldn't see them like stepping over the people who disagree with them. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. see them like you know if a woman says something they don't like, they have no problem you know tar and feathering that person. If a person that is black or Hispanic or you know LGBTQ uh, agrees with them, they're great. If they say something they don't like, they have no problem calling them alt right and labeling them incorrectly and everything to shut them up or step over them, ignore them. So if it was truly about placing the emotional safety and advancement of groups above their personal freedom of expression. Uh, then they wouldn't. They would listen to people who thought differently from them that were minority groups. They don't. They just lump everybody together and then label them whatever they can to dismiss them, so they feel better about doing so. This this is why they flip the fuck out. Because the thing is, in their circles, the rules are understood. Their rules are understood. You do something wrong, according to the group, you're supposed to just you know, curl up and die. But what if you're one of the minorities they're claiming they're defending, but you don't agree with them? Well, you say something and then you get ostracized anyway. But what's going on though is people are pushing back. They're like, hey, I don't have to play by your rules because I'm not part of your group. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what fries the circuit. I mean, this is a very much like a cult because a religious cult, people in the religious cult, you know, apply their rules to everybody else in the world. And they just, a lot of times they assume because they've, they've been indoctrinated that like everybody else thinks the way that they do. Well, even, isn't this somehow worse though? Because it's like, they're basically like saying it's okay to use people as shields if you're doing it for the greater good of those people. Yeah. Isn't that basically what, it, you know, so isn't that like shitty? This, no, this is totally shit all the way around because really at the end of the day, what this is about is your leaders in these groups they want to be the ones in control. And so how they get rid of competition and free thought is they basically train people well, to, that's it. to delete themselves if if they're wrong thinkers, because that's the the just thing to do. And they, they gussy it up with, oh, well, if you're a moral person, you just go fucking die. This is very dangerous because that just means there's a generation of people that are easily controlled with the threat of, you know, oh, you're a bad person. They tried this with people like us. It didn't get them very far. I mean, like with our generation and older, it didn't get them very far. Oh, we were but it, independent as hell. Yeah. I mean, we, these like, kids yeah. are, yeah. And these, they tried it with people like us. It didn't work. And now, they, but it's working on this younger group of people, which could be, you know, if knowing that is the case, anybody could like, manipulate these people into doing whatever they wanted just by trying to control the narrative. Exactly. I that, know. That is exactly the point. Again, if you go back to religious cults, it's all about wearing down the individual so mm -hmm. they give up their own free will and they give up their own opinions and they blend into the group. And then if they're dissenting opinion, they're ostracized right. from the group. But the worst possible punishment for them is to be ostracized because they're so dependent on the group they don't know what to do with they themselves. They have no sense of identity. They have no sense of identity. And then here's yeah. the thing, too. It's like, you know, they, this is why you see these echo chambers. Because they're told, well, if you see anybody that's saying something you don't like or that we don't agree with, to to silence them, delete them, block them, whatever. The thing is, then you only ever get one perspective, their perspective. Because they're being told that that's the enemy. And the thing is, people that don't like the same thing you like, especially over something as simple as a cartoon show, are not your enemy. They just have different tastes than you. But it's come down to a bad battleground over stupidity and it it just blows my mind because it's never been about the cartoons it's never no been about it's about the controlling it's this about next generation why why won't you roll over and die because if it were me i would roll over and die and i'm like that's why you're gonna get rolled great by the world let's just tell them all uh, that they're all shitty people, they're all istophobic. Because honestly, a lot of the behavior we're seeing out of these extremists is istophobic behavior. Yeah. That they should be canceling themselves you should be. for the exact same things they're demanding everybody else. And since they will cancel themselves because they don't want to look like they're, they're, they're hurting minorities, then they can just cancel themselves into oblivion. So everybody should start just calling them out and saying they need to cancel themselves for, you know, being istophobic towards minority groups. So they said uh, somebody 18 to 25 who fears cancel culture has a nearly 60% chance of agreeing it's justifiable. 
Uh, that's one finding from the report, which describes young people's affinity for what it calls cultural socialism, a worldview that's that your va right there. values equal results in harm prevention for identity groups over individual rights, has inspired race-based pedagogues and harsh punishments for controversial speech. Yes, we know. And it's, it's infiltrated everything, and they're flipping the fuck out because they can't control everybody. They're not going to be able to because the majority of people aren't on Twitter. And I think the majority of people aren't going to fall for this shit. No. And so they're trying to use entertainment to, to mold people too. And it's just, it's fucking, it's falling apart. It is falling apart. And a lot of these people, the, the reactions I see, you know, when you see them try to come at from like a hundred different angles, like you've got psychopaths that will stalk YouTubers for two years because they cannot understand that that YouTuber might have a difference well, of opinion. What it comes down to at the end of the day isn't even about shows and stuff like you said. It's about control. Control. And here's where we're going to talk about that. They said uh, the ideology remains the, be the very best predictor of support for cancel culture with progressives supporting it and conservatives opposing it. Age was a remarkably useful proxy. Cancel culture drew some support from young Republicans, for instance. Younger respondents are significantly more politically biased. Even controlling party identification, race, and gender. Some 55% of Joe Biden voters, 25 and under, would not hire a Donald Trump supporter for a job. Uh, that's called discrimination. Yeah. Dropping a, to a 39% for the 26 to 49 group and 29% for those over 50. Here's the thing. For years, you got hired for jobs and they didn't know who you voted for because it wasn't on your application and it didn't matter. Uh, this is another form of discrimination. Um, that's all this is. And you're going to get your ass sued for discrimination. I mean, they're even like asking questions like, would you fire, if you're blue, would you, would you fire executives who donated to Trump? So this is where a lot of shit is coming from. And it is, I believe, coming from the colleges. And I think as oh, yeah. these, these people trickle out into the quote unquote real world and they're, they're surrounded by, uh, you know, like-minded people, it fries their circuits that others don't view things. The vast majority of, of the public doesn't view things this way because a lot of these people, you know, they were minted in college. They go get their media job. They go get their, you know, job in entertainment, whatever. And and you see a lot of this shit and it's coming from under 30s. And then you've got older people who are, who used to be sane going along with it because they know if they don't, they're going to get freaking fired too. You know, what's really weird too to me is the fact, and this is on both sides, that people are just like, you know, it, it's all Trump, Trump, Biden, Biden. It's like you do know that they're just here for a small, it's a small time and there'll be somebody else next, right? You like the way that they're so obsessed with these particular people specifically. Yeah. And it's, it's not, it goes beyond just political lines. It's just a party, you know, sticking to your party. It's just like almost like idolatry in some level, like the level of cultism around these kids. It's about the candidate. It's not even about the platform anymore. Because if we're dealing with younger people, they don't have a lot of life experience. So a good portion of their life was, was, you know, dictated by all the drama around, you know, who was in office. There's not a lot of perspective. They had like on there, like how many people would, would eat lunch with someone who vote for, voted, you know, for the person opposite you. And I'm like, that's stupid. You know, there's plenty of things in the world to talk about. I have, I meet people all the time. I have no idea who they vote for. I don't ask. Don't care. Uh, if they're somebody who's nice, I'd be like, I'd have lunch with you. At the end of the day, my thing is don't be an asshole. I mean, that, just don't be an asshole no matter who you voted for or what you like or what you think. It's easy. Just be a decent person. If you make a mistake, say, hey, I'm sorry. I made a, a legitimate mistake, not just a perceived mistake by Twitter. If you made a legitimate mistake, apologize because intent matters. And then just don't be an asshole. Problem solved across the board. I get so tired of this shit. And I think a lot of it comes from, I mean, even look at the difference in, you know, our kids going to school. Versus when we went to school and how they they deal with with problems. There's a lot of you know group activities and group projects. And I used to get so pissed when Squid King would say, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna fail because the other kids in my group oh, that happened. yeah it happened me all the time didn't too. do their damn job." I'm like, "Fuck those other kids! You do the best job you can do, you know, because it doesn't they're gonna they're if they want to fail. That's on them. You know, you want to succeed, you got to do it. And I, I mean just. Everything about this is frustrating. I think our kids have been trained to be part of a fucking freaking hive mind. You yeah, know? basically. And you know, and the thing is, again, I, this study I question for many reasons. Yeah, one, it's like, the where'd numbers they get seem that? low. Yeah. Where'd they get these people from? Um, and all that. Uh, the comments are going to be delightful. Um, 
20 years of uh, indoctrinate press indoctrination. Yes, that's exactly it's it. That's exactly what this is. You know, that's Stop exactly indoctrination. That's oppressing free speech. I always tell my kids to think for themselves and it's OK to question things. I, I always tell them that because it's like, you know, I don't want them to be like, you know, easily controlled. The fact that these kids are being taught to be easily controlled should disturb you. Well, what gets me is like when you've got kids that are seriously considering suicide because of mean things said to them on the internet. Yes. I'm like, look, I, and I, I certainly don't, I mean, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible that, that this has happened. It has happened in many cases, but I'm also like, we used to get in fist fights, like knock down, drag out fist fights. They still do. You know, but not, you know, and even then, like that was never something that 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 crossed my mind. You know, um, I don't understand why the fear of mean things on the internet has become such a, a driving well, the, force. The problem is now there are a lot of, kids. Kids have always been cruel. Let's be honest here. I mean, not every person, obviously, but there are there are always been. No matter what generation it was, there were always little shits everywhere. And, you know, the thing about now is because of all the cameras everywhere and everything else, if you do something, like when we were kids, you something would happen, people tell stories of it, but there was no evidence of no video that would resurface. Now these kids are being taped and then it's like, you know, so they can constantly have that video played over and over again to mock them. And, you know, it, I can't imagine the way being bullied now. I mean, just by what we get, I can't imagine what these kids get from these people. And it's like, you know, teach your kids not to be assholes. I'm like, Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, this is a quote yeah, from there you go. 1984 uh, that, you know, parents are afraid of their children because they've been indoctrinated. And uh, it's, it's yeah, it's really sad. And I think, you know, I, I don't, I'm not as uh, pessimistic. I mean, this article is kind of like, oh my God, yeah. we're all screwed. Because I'm seeing maybe, maybe with some millennials, and I think it is mostly younger millennials, that are participating in this, but I've seen in Gen Z, there's a spark of something like they're kind of like, yeah, this is bullshit. Yeah. Then there's some that are just like totally, sheep. you know, yeah, sadly, I, I'm seeing a lot of sheep too. And well, just, just imagine though, if you, if you are not a sheep, right, how easy it's going to be for you to basically walk in and take over. Well, no, they'll try to cancel you because you're you're the voice of, you know, opposition and that you, and you should, you should know you should self cancel yourself for making a mistake. I'm like, people make mistakes. And sometimes, you know, you say something really dumb and it, or it's misconstrued. Oh, my God, that happens all the damn time. And what's happening the other day is when you have news outlets taking things out of context and running with it as if it's the reality of the situation, knowingly taking things out of context to control a narrative, and that's what these kids are seeing, it, it's, a, it's a very dangerous thing. First of all, the media needs to be held more accountable. Yeah, no that's question. that is, I believe, happening across um, the board. I'm not yeah. talking just one side. No, I'm talking no, no. across the board. We used to have more checks and balances, you know, for yeah. sure. People used to be a lot more sane. I, I don't know. I, my, my, my feeling on this, um, being a libertarian and a capitalist, is be a fucking wolf. My, Eat my, those motherfuckers. Well, my <laughs> opinion on this as a mom and a teacher is I'm a little dis, I'm a little concerned and worried about these kids because even in the, in the past when there's been protesting groups, you know. They could. They were taught to think for themselves, and they made that choice on their own because they, you know, wanted to to oppose something like war or whatever. Yeah. But now it's just been. It's just been. It's more like a hive mind mentality is being taught. Um, don't rock the boat. Don't rock the boat. And I'm concerned that these kids aren't going to be able to like are, are going to be so easily manipulated and taken advantage of, and it concerns me. That is the point. That I is know the it's point. the point. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm as a mom and a teacher. That's more concerning to me. Is the fact that and it's all about gaining control. It's all about certain ideologies taking hold. And when the older people are gone, that we have these people and they're, we're going to be able to control them. Weak, fearful. Mm -hmm. And they are. It's basically sheep. it's basically controlled by fear that they are actually being taken, not only taking part of trying to control by fear, but being allowed to be controlled by fear. Yeah. Um, and this whole idea of if I don't do what they want me to do, I'm the, I'm going to be by myself. Well, you don't need a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of police officers when the sheep will police each other. You only need a couple to to keep them mm -hmm. in line, you know. And that's that's the the insidiousness of all of this is if you've trained people to delete themselves, you basically place like a false conscious in them. Like mm -hmm. what you're giving them is not an actual conscious. It's 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 you, you know the the States, the program, pre -programmed the programming, conscious. right? So they they delete themselves. So you don't really have to police them very hard because they'll they'll police each other and they'll they'll out of sheer guilt, 
uh, delete themselves. But then the problem with that is you never can be you never can be close to anyone because you can trust no one. It's like you know if I I make the wrong thing, my my friend's going to out me. You know what I mean? They do that. They're, I know. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's I mean it's one thing. That's one of the the horrible side effects of this, and you see it in these these Twitter relationships. And you see it in the mental health. You know the mental health issues that it keep increasing. Yeah. Because nobody trusts each other. They're all willing to turn on each other. I mean, hell, I've seen it with, you know, people like coming to us back channel about like, well, you know, this person said this about you or whatever. I'm like, well, geez, I thought you were one of their friends. You're not because you're just trying to keep yourself from getting deleted. Right. And the thing is, what you know, if you if you can't trust people and, and you're always living in fear, we see it with other when we, when we call out like, you know, dictatorships or, you know, terrible things that they're all like, you know, fighting against other people have to live in fear. How is this any different? It's not any different. No. You're just afraid of being canceled and being ostracized. It's very cultish. Um, you're afraid of being shunned. Uh, it, it's just this is the exact same thing. I mean, it might not be on as, as such a big scale as something like a dictatorship, but it's it's a similar thing. It's like one thought process, one accepted you know thought or like you know range of thoughts is what you're allowed to 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 believe in. It's very very concerning. I I think it's worse than a dictatorship because at least with a dictatorship you have a clear enemy. That's true. In this case, it's like you have the one person to be afraid of. It's in this case is your peers. You're you're afraid of your peers. You're afraid of everybody you work with. You're afraid of making a misstep. You're going to get, you know, uh, ostracized and pushed out of industries. And we've seen it. And this is why they get so frustrated with people who push back, even if, if it's mildly pushing back, because they can't comprehend it. They can't comprehend that some people have that uh, very basic self-preservation instinct that they will fight tooth and mm -hmm. nail to save their livelihoods, save their families, save their friends. Um, stand up to bullies because they've been... this is bullying. This is yeah, what this is. They've been trained to basically lay down and get kicked in the they've face. They've been trained to be bullied and to and to bully. Yeah. And that's completely acceptable as long as you're getting... You're, you're helping the minorities that you bully when they don't agree with you. No, that's how they that's how they couch it. Because it's like, oh... And, and again, it's the same as a religious cult. It's like, oh, this... You know, committing suicide is perfectly acceptable because the aliens told us to. You know, you know I mean, oh that's... yeah, killing yourself is completely acceptable because you didn't draw that character with the right shade of the skin tone, and that's and, and and it's gotten to that point. It's insane, and it needs to stop. And bullying, um, yelling about acceptance and inclusion and diversity, and how bullying's wrong and 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 all that stuff, but then turning around doing the same thing by labeling people. You demand people respect your labels, but then you just project labels on people that aren't even necessarily true to. To justify in your mind why you're, it's okay for you to do it them, to them, what you're claiming is not okay to be done in general. You know, the other side of it is you let these people just cancel themselves. That's right. And you just walk in and take over. Step over them and ignore them. They'll, they'll eat each other eventually. They're they're already doing it. Uh, cancel culture is not working in a lot of cases uh, now, not like it used to, because a lot of people are like, why why am I deleting myself again? Why did I why did I resign from my job when I didn't do anything wrong. Right. You know? Yeah. I did. Uh, Cause or someone misconstrued something. So I'm yeah. being fired. The fact that just cause somebody doesn't like a movie or show you like, or somebody made a joke you don't like, or somebody has opinions you don't like, that is not a reason to be calling their employer and trying to get them fired. That is insane. If somebody called, if somebody called me up as an employer, we employ people. Somebody called me up and said, did you know that one of your employees is saying mean things on Twitter? I'd be like, well, what Twitter do deserve it? Yeah. <laughs> like, let me go see, because Twitter probably said, you know, and my thing is like, look, whatever you do in your free time, as long as you're not doing anything illegal, you know. They hurt I, my feelings. They should be fired. I don't give a shit. Did they do their job? Are they making the company money? I don't give a shit if Twitter's feelings are hurt. Actually, I'd be like, well, geez, man, go for it. Bonus. Go for it. Tell you what. Tell you what. Uh, you work a little overtime. You hurt Twitter's feelings more, because I love to see it. I love to see it. I'm just like, uh. Yeah, you guys are really going to have to... Now, maybe as they get older and with age comes wisdom sometimes. And maybe, They're not going to make it. They're um, not going to make it to well, get we've older. we've seen people, though, that were like in... Because this reminds me, like, you know, some of the, of the other, like, groups back in the past. But, like, for example, um, like, the, there was that the, the, the hippie, you know, free love movement and all that yeah. crap. And there are some people who did some really dumbass things then. And, like, my mom always brings up Barbara Hershey. She, like, she was doing something and somehow a seagull that she was working with got killed. So she she embodied the spirit of the seagull and took the name Barbara Seagull for years. And now she looks back on it. And you can tell she looks back on it, like, and people bring it up, like, what the f*** was I thinking, you know? Did, did she eat a chocolate bar? 
And she felt bad. Is that why she's Barbara Hershey? Uh, no, no, that was her real name. Her real oh, name. okay. I just thought she's like, oh my God, and I ate the chocolate. No, she, and the that was a seagull. Of the she changed her name to Seagull, to Barbara okay. Seagull. And it's just like, and that's what mom brings up a lot because that's what it reminds us of. And it's like, you know, when you, you I've done things not as a kid where I thought I was fighting for something right. I look back and I'm like, oh my God, I was so effing stupid. So I'm hoping reason wins out, but no pun intended was as good. I. I have a feeling it won't. I think I think the smart ones will stop being pussies and start thinking for themselves. Thinking for yourself. Just think for yourself. You know? Just you can still stop. be a good person and think for yourself, contrary to what they're telling you. Maybe not worry about being a good person so much and just be an individual, you know? You can try to be a good person. I don't think any of us are truly good people. Nobody is. I mean, Nobody everybody's is. made mistakes. If, 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 if you're not a truly good person, if you've ever made an error, um, then there's nobody. Yeah. So good luck with that. Um, like I said, you know, in the, uh, there's more for the rest of us. If you want to blow yourselves up, fantastic. All right. I'm going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, news and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.